basically what I did is I put my camera down on a tripod, set up everything that I wanted, locked everything down into manual, and then had it take a photograph every 10 seconds. Now, there's several ways you can do that. Um, you can use the intervalometer, which is um, an extra piece of equipment that you can buy for your camera if you're on a Canon. A Nikon has a built-in intervalometer. You could also tether it to a laptop and use the software that comes with the camera. And another option, actually, which I really like using, too, is the Cam Ranger. And a Cam Ranger enables you to wirelessly control your camera from an iPad or an iPhone. So you can use a Cam Ranger also to create a time-lapse sequence. So whichever method you choose, you lock it down, you take a photograph once every 10 seconds or whatever interval you choose. In this case, I've chosen once every 10 seconds and the movement happens here. Now, when we put this together, we can make the movement happen very, very quickly as if time is passing very quickly. You've seen the effect. Uh, it's been used in a lot of uh, TV shows. And in fact, House of Cards on on uh, Netflix used it for the introduction. It was HDR time lapses with the entire intro to that show. So let's have a look at a little trick that I've got here for previewing these and seeing, hey, is this even going to work as a time lapse? So what we're going to do is we've got all the photos in a folder. I'm going to hit, hit Control A and that would be Command A. You can see there in the preview that I've selected them all. I have 297 photos. We've got 297 selected. So we've selected all those photos right there. You can see that. And what I want to do now is I want to see if this is going to work. So I'm going to audition these photos. So I'm going to right click. And now that I've right clicked, I'm going to go down to stack. And I'm working inside a bridge right now. I'm going to choose group as stack. So I've grouped these as a stack. Well, let's zoom it in a little bit so we can see it better. And one of the things you'll notice is this little uh, thing here. And you can pull and click and drag to test that. Or you can hit the play button and let it play back by itself. So it's kind of playing back there, but it's looking a little weird. So here's another tip for you is if you right click and you go down to stack, you'll see frame rate. Right now it's playing two frames per second. So you can actually use the stacks in Bridge to go through it and show you all the photographs in a folder or wherever you want to look. So I'm going to increase this to about 24 frames per second, which is a cinematic uh, frame rate. And then we're just going to click play and now we can see, hey, you know, that's looking pretty good. But notice down here, it's not playing a video. It's advancing these photographs and showing us 24 of these individual photographs every second. So that's showing me what the time lapse would look like had I created it in Photoshop. So I am going to create this in Photoshop. So let's jump into Photoshop now because this seems like, you know what, this is past the audition. I love it. It's going to work. We're going to create a time lapse. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose file and we're going to choose open. Now when we've got open, what we want to do is we want to go down to our time lapse folder. So there's our time lapse folder and we're going to open it up and we'll see there's all our photographs in here. So I'm going to select just the first one. And then you'll see a little button down here that says image sequence. Now, if we select that button, what it's going to do is it's going to load these into a sequence. And this will work because of the naming. You see it says 434, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, blah, blah, blah. Now, as long as this is unbroken, all of these photos are going to load into a time lapse. Now, before I do that, let's go back into Bridge. And uh, one of the things I want to show you is if this doesn't work, and let's expand this open and I'm just going to ungroup these from a stack. And they don't have to be in a stack for the time lapse to work, by the way. That was only for previewing it. So if these numbers are not sequential, it's going to stop putting the time lapse together. So what you could do is hit Control A, select them all. And then you could go under here. You could go under your batch rename option. And if you choose batch rename, you could name it to, I don't know, time lapse. NY for time lapse New York. And let's get rid of all these other options. And what we're going to do here, we can set it to sequential. So if you choose sequential number, you're going to start at zero. You definitely want to do zero, zero, one. And then we're going to do three digits. And in this case, well, it can do up to 999, which is more than sufficient for what we've got in that folder. We've got 297. 
So in this case here, we could do that. And if we just click rename, it will rename all of those inside the same folder. So we'll overwrite the other names, rename them. So I'm just going to cancel because we're not going to do that. But if you did that, that would break any gaps inside your sequence and enable your time lapse to work correctly. All right, so let's go back now into Photoshop and continue putting together the time lapse. So what we're doing is we chose open. We're selecting the first image, turning on the option for image sequence. Now we're going to click open. Now it asks us what frame rate we want. So you'll see there's different options here. Now the two main frame rates that you're going to be using are going to be 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. If you're going to be putting this into a video, you want the frame rate to match. Now, 24 frames per second is very common for cinematic. That's what you see when you go to the movie theater. 30 frames per second is what you see on video. Now, some video cameras will be shooting at 2997, which is 30 frames, but check that. And also 2397 would be 24 frames on some video cameras. So check that you've got the right frame rate. And in this case, we're going to choose 24 frames per second and we're going to click OK. And what's going to happen is it's loaded up for every second of video now. There's going to be 24 of those images. So if we've got 297 images, divide that by 24. That'll show you how many seconds of footage we have. And, um, and of course, I did this once every 10 seconds. So if you times it by 6, you know, for 60 seconds, it'll show you how long the time was. So, you know, I might just have a few seconds of footage that took maybe 30 minutes to shoot. So what we're doing is we're taking that 30 minutes of time and compressing it into a few seconds. So if you want to compress time more, you shoot less, shoot at 20 seconds for every shot. If you want to um, compress time more and make time um, slow down, what you're gonna do, well actually time speed up, you're gonna shoot less, maybe once a minute, you know, so you, you'll just kind of, uh, Go go with that. So the shorter amount of time that you want it to happen, you're going to have less photos. If you want it to happen over a large amount of time, you're going to take more photos. I think I think you can figure that out. All right, so let's go down. We're going to go under the window here. And under window, we're going to show the timeline. And now that I show, whoops, not there. We're going to show the timeline. And with the timeline open, we can see right here, there's our image sequence. And if we hit the space bar, we can actually play it. And you can see we're playing this image sequence right back here inside of, uh, of Photoshop. So it's that easy to create a time-lapse sequence. Very, very, very easy. Now, one of the things we can do, how do we get it out of here? Well, we're going to choose File and we're going to choose Export. Under Export, we're going to render video. So we're going to choose the option to render the video. And then Photoshop's just going to go here. It's initializing video exports the first time. Uh, I've run this option here on this particular machine. So it needs to load up and just get everything set up. So we'll just give it a second here. And once it's set up once, it's not going to take this long every other time to do it. So here we go. So what it's doing is actually just opening a subset of um, Meteor Encoder. So here we go. What we're going to do is just give it a name, give it a location. And then in this case here, we're going to be outputting it to the default, which is going to be H.264. And then we're just going to use a preset. So if you use a preset, uh, if you want to keep the same size that we've been working with, just choose high, medium, or low. Or you can choose any one of these other presets, such as YouTube or whatever you want here, iPhones, iPads, etc. You know, grab one of these presets. And that will actually crop and um, add bars or whatever is necessary to make this fit these different formats that you're outputting into. Now, the other option is a second option. If you're going to be working on this time lapse, maybe in Premiere Pro, or you're going to bring it back into Photoshop, you're going to be doing more work with it. You want a lossless format. So you're going to change this. Um, you could choose the image sequence here, and that will actually output it exactly as it was, and you get all the individual images once, uh, exactly again. Or you can change the format here to QuickTime, and you're going to get animation high quality, which is a lossless format. So you're not going to lose anything on here, but the files are going to be much bigger. So depending on which way you're going to go, you're just going to hit render and it's going to export them. So I'm just going to hit cancel there and you can kind of see what we've got there. That's great. So that's uh, in essence uh, time lapse. So in the next video, though, I'm going to show you how to do a little tilt shift effect 
with the uh, time lapse. <laughs> 